Hello and welcome back to another Thorncraft 4.2 tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be continuing on uh, where we left off last time, which was on the Thaumaturgy tab. Uh, we did all of the one cores and stuff. Staff cores aren't that much different. Uh, they're mainly for attacks and that. We can give you a quick brief run over of them now. Uh, it's pretty much just two, uh, two of the rods with a primal charm on the end of it and a little bit of... Um, this in the thing, not too bad at all. It stores 175 of each, um, and yeah, so basically, it's made for attacking. Uh, we can do a great wood one there, you can do a silver wood one here as well, and you can also make scepters as well, which we'll get into another time at a later date. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be continuing on today, uh, with. Uh, node stabilizers and node stabilization and how to harness this and stuff like that because that's what you need now that you got your wand and stuff that's sort of the direction you want to go now you've got your like silvered wand you can go tr capture all your nodes bring them all back and do as you please with them so we've got a couple of nodes set up here we got some bits and pieces there's two fundamental differences between the node stabilizer and the advanced node stabilizer and then you got the transducer as well which does something really cool which i'll explain in just a moment so first of all, you're going to want to know how to craft these two beautiful items. Uh, the very first one will be the node stabilizer. You're going to have to make one of these in order to make the advanced one. So this is going to be your very first step. Uh, it's going to take a piece of night ore, which is done in alchemy. Very, very simple stuff. It's a piece of glowstone with some uh, aspects in it. We'll get around to that when we get to alchemy. Um, arcane stone bricks as well. These are fairly simple. Um, I haven't showed you these ones yet. Uh, but it's pretty much just um, smooth stone bricks around any of the shards and it's going to make you nine of the arcane stone blocks and then you just put them together to make bricks uh, like you would anything else. Uh, a vanilla piston, two blocks of quartz, a bit of gold on top and obviously you've got your night ore and it's going to take 32 terra, aqua and auto to make this one. Cool, and then once you've got that one, uh, you can go up and upgrade to the advanced node stabilizer. This one's done in an infusion altar, that's why I've got it in a chest. Uh, it's gonna take two night ore, two alimentium, uh, which is, again is done in alchemy, very, very simple stuff, and four vanilla redstone blocks, and then the node stabilizer in the middle. Uh, so, t and then obviously the aspects you're gonna need in, the essential you're gonna need in jars are Oram, 32 of, 16 auto, 16 potentia, and 16 precantatio. Pretty simple stuff. So you guys are probably now wondering what are the difference between these two uh, node stabilizers and why would I want to spend all that time upgrading to the advanced one? Uh, so let me quickly tell you. I'm gonna grab out the book and I'm gonna go through that entry with you guys just to sort of break it down for you a little bit as well, just in case you guys are trying to read along with this. Uh, so this one has several benefits um, if placed below a node. First, it prevents a node from draining this from other nodes or being drained in turn. So as you can see, we've got a node over here. We can place any nodes around here and they're not going to drain from here or these ones aren't going to drain from here. Wait, hang on a second. Okay, we need to get rid of that one. That's a hungry node. We don't want that. We don't want the hungry node. Oh, that was terrible luck. Um, I've been looking for hungry nodes for ages and I've never been able to find one. Right, continuing on. Never mind the hungry node. So place these down here. As you can see, these are all interacting with each other. You'll see them lose a little bit now and then. Or it'll gain something. See, that one just gained terror because it's pulled it out of this one. This one here has not been touched and will not be touched while it is in the aura thing. You can disable this by putting a redstone signal on it. Um, we'll quickly grab a lever to demonstrate that. Uh, but yeah, you, te you technically, if you go like that, it'll disable it. And as you can see, now they're gonna start to interact with this middle one a little bit. You Sometimes you don't want that. So you don't want all your nodes interfering with each other so you can just Get rid of the redstone signal and it'll put it in a little aura bubble again. But say you did want to do that, you could drop the shields and do that if you really wanted to. So there is a way to disable it without having to destroy the entire thing. Cool. So let's continue on. Right. So 
Da, 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 da. Secondly, it prevents unstable nodes from losing their vis. So unstable nodes will sometimes lose their vis. I haven't covered nodes yet. Uh, I'm going to do a whole episode on it, I think, of all the different types of nodes. As you saw, there's a hungry one there and it started destroying things. But they're really, really cool. And we'll go into them in more detail later on. Uh, so, firstly, it prevents node from draining this from other nodes or being drained in turn. Secondly, it prevents unstable nodes from losing their this and has a tiny chance of eventually removing the unstable condition completely. So, unstable nodes aren't stable, pretty self explanatory. They will start to fluctuate with their this event, uh, over time. Uh, this can remove, has a really small chance of removing. There's a creeper there looking at the nodes. Um, last, uh, so it has a very very small chance of um, removing it and making it a stable node uh, it also has a very very small chance of turning fade nodes into pale nodes so fading nodes are nodes which are going to vanish from the world eventually they're not going to stay there for very long and they'll eventually drain out and remove themselves from the world if you stick it in this it has a chance to turn it into a pale node which means it has a slow recharge rate but it won't leave the world um, and it's going to be very very slow to sort of recharge itself, but It will stop it from disappearing if it's a really good node that you want to keep um, It says this required power heaven and no stabilizer draws this from the node itself It does not draw enough to reduce the vis. So don't worry It's not going to take any vis from your node that you have in there, but it will um, Half the normal recharge rate. So if you did have a pale node in there, it's got probably Let's throw some figures out. A normal node has 100%. Let's say a normal node has um, a recharge rate of 10. Um, a pale node would have a recharge rate of 5 because it's half of what the normal one is. Um, so take that into consideration that once you put this in here, so if you had a pale node in here, had this activated, it's going to redraw take power, so it's going to reduce the normal rate by half. So it's going to take it to 0.25 for pale nodes. Uh, it's going to, yeah, 2.5 for pale nodes. It's going to drop the normal nodes down to 5, so on and so forth. You kind of get the picture there with that and how that works. So it does have this little bit of a drawback, but it does still have a recharge rate, so it's not all bad. So you're probably wondering, like, I kind of want to keep this, but I want it to draw from other nodes around the outside. And this is where you'll upgrade to the advanced node stabilizer. So this thing here is really, really nifty. Uh, do the exact same things this one does has a couple more uh, negative factors on it So just bear that in mind as well. Just gonna go to time set day here uh, So yeah, just bear that in mind as well It does have a couple more negative factors, but I've got one set up over here We've got a couple bits and pieces in it, but if you see we're gonna place maybe a couple nodes around from here So these are all gonna interact with each other on the outside that one won't because it's bigger um, so that's the next thing I need to talk to you about is basically um, advanced node stabilizers perform all the functions of lesser versions with a few major differences. They, firstly, they still prevent lesser nodes from having their vis drained. Um, so, like the lesser nodes, normally the more powerful nodes take over. So, you see here uh, where we have the 101 Terra, it would normally start pulling the 32 Terra out of this one here and into that. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna do that though because we've got it in this little aura thing But it will however start draining from these other ones around the outside So you got all these different things in these and they're gonna start being pulled into here eventually if you put enough of nodes around it As long as we don't get a hungry one. Hopefully we don't uh, But yeah, it will start zapping into here and you'll see it will start pulling from the lesser nodes and start harnessing some of it, this into it and becoming stronger. Uh, secondly, it has a higher chance to improve unstable and failing nodes. So, apart from a very, instead of a very very small chance of increasing the, uh, increasing them, improving them, sorry, it now only has a small chance. So it's a, a slightly better. It's not like a hundred percent guaranteed. It's not always going to happen. It's not going to be amazing, but it's certainly going to be better than the previous one. Uh, unfortunately, this costs a lot more power from the stabilized node. Still not, not, still not enough to drain this from it, so don't worry. Your node's not going to reduce itself in size. Um, it, uh, even the, but even the brightest node will have its recharge, recharge 
rate almost completely negated. So the brighter nodes have like, let's say 15 recharge rate. We're going on the base number here. These aren't actual figures. I'm just giving them as examples. So even if it has 15, it's not gonna happen. It's just gonna negate it, completely negate it. It's not gonna exist anymore. Uh, so once you've got all of these and you're like, oh right, uh, say you've drawn from it, you're like, I really need it to recharge. You can just stick a redstone signal, make sure there's no nodes around it, but you can stick a redstone signal on it and it will start draining out of it. So what is actually taking up everything? This one's taking everything because it's the more powerful node. Uh, so if we remove that one, we should start getting things in the middle here. Move that one as well, because that one's quite powerful as well. So you want like a really powerful one in the middle and then all the other ones around the outside. So if you had one with a hundred uh, thing on it, stick that in the middle because that is gonna pull from everything else because that's gonna be the more dominant one. Um, but yeah, so. That is the difference between them two, and that's the difference that you can sort of decide on what you want from that. Uh, personally, I'd say, uh, personally, I just go straight to this one and go off of that. Um, but yeah, so next thing we're going to have a quick look at, we're not going to go too much onto this one, is the transducer. See, I've got one of them set up over here. Fairly simple thing to make. You're going to need another node stabilizer. Uh, it's going to take a night ore, two iron ingots, a redstone comparator, and reds, four redstone blocks. It's going to take 32 air and ignis to make this thing. So we're going to quickly grab one of them. And we're going to have a look at the entry and just go through it with you guys again. So without this, nodes of thormatage will not even be able to perform the simplest task, but nodes themselves have several limitations that make their use impractical for extensive operations. Foremost among these limitations is the fact that they are easily depleted and it takes quite some time, some time for them to gather energy from the mystical source they are connected to. So as you know, re nodes take a little while to recharge, especially when you've got them on this stabilizer. Um, it's not going to recharge whatsoever. It'll charge half the rate on the other one So you think you might have found a way around that limitation and the effect nodes are tiny gateways to a mysterious font of Mystical energy around which the energy slowly accumulates in the form of this this gateway is so small That only a tiny amount of energy leaks into our reality by levering this open by levering open this doorway You can use cause this to pour forth in a torrent. This is even more dangerous than it sounds However, and careful sets might be taken during the entire process. Firstly, a node needs to be stabilized during the entire process. So to do this, you need to have it on a stabilizer. A stabilizer has to be active. You cannot disable the stabilizer once you have it energized. Um, once this is done, you need to craft and place a node transducer above the node. When you apply a redstone signal to the transducer, the node will begin converting into an energized node and quickly lose its stored bits in the process. Protest will take a little while, but when it is done, the node will change into an energized node. Caution should be taken to keep both the stabilizer and transducer active from now on. Energized nodes no longer store or recharge this, nor can be drawn from the one with other means. Instead, they produce a steady supply of CV, a cent of this, or a hundredth of a this each tick. This energy can be tapped by placing this relays near the energy node. Each relay... Right, so this goes on to relays, which is going to be a whole different thing. So as you can see, we're getting a load of stuff inside this one now. As you can see, we've got 21, 23, and 32. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of this. I'm going to show you what happens when you energize it, and we're going to show you what happens when you break it, just for a little bit of fun so you guys know what not to do. Right, so we've got this node here now. Really, really cool. It's going to be a lot more powerful. You want to try and get them all to 100. That's your end goal, because if you can get everything up to 100, then you're going to have a perfect perfect node so let's quickly jump into this again we need a lever so what we're going to do is we got this thing here you can just remember them numbers we got one two uh the humanus isn't going to be there it's going to break it all down into primal aspects uh so we got one air 21 ignis 23 aqua and 32 terra as you can see, it's going to drain out. Don't worry, don't worry, don't panic yourselves. This thing will sort itself out in a bit. It's going to take a little bit of work to do, uh, but it will eventually work. So the way I've been described it, I'm not sure how it exactly works, but I think it used to be divided by 10. We'll find out in just a second here. Um, I think it used to be divided by 10. So if we had 31 Ignis in there, uh, 31 Terra in there, sorry, it would drop down to... Uh, three so we'll see if that's the case if not it will be five um, the other way that I've been told it's the square root of the number that was in there so if you have one that's 36 it'd be a six if you had one that was 
49, it'd be a 7, so on and so forth, all the way up to 100. Uh, we'll see exactly what happens. There you go. So it's got a 4 on it, which we went from 31 to 4. Not bad. So I'm thinking it might actually be the square root of the number. Uh, but then we had 31 in there, so that should be a 5. Not too sure what went on there. Um, but... I don't know. I think it might be divided by 10. I'm not 100% sure on that one. But as you can see there, we got 111444. So these are multiples of 10. So it's like a tenth of a vis or something like that. I don't know how it was described. Uh, but yeah, so you want to keep these two things active at all times. If you want to disable it, you can. You flip that and it will eventually, it might explode. It might not. So just be careful of that. Um, but one thing you do not want to do is break it. I'm going to show you exactly why. So let's break the transducer, bang, flux everywhere, flux everywhere, flux everywhere. You do not want to break these things at all. So let's just place another node on there and we'll get ready for the next episode, which is where we're going to talk about transporting this stuff around and stuff like that. So we're going to flip that one and leave that to go. And then next episode, we'll go over the VIS relays, how to move it around and stuff like that. And then we're going to go over charging wands and stuff like that. And then obviously move on to focal manipulation. Might do that in a completely separate one because there's a lot to cover in that section. But thank you guys very, very much for watching. I hope you guys have learned something. I try to do it as in depth as possible while keeping it as short as possible. Um, hopefully I have succeeded. Um, let me know if you have any questions below. Um, I'll do my best to help you out. But thank you guys again very, very much for watching. I'd like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, in the description below. Have yourselves a very fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.